All right, today we have the Samsung 980 Pro and I'm gonna put this in my brand new Alienware M18. I also have the 980 Pro with heat sink, but of course the heat sink won't fit in a laptop. The non-heat sink one is the best one for that. I'm a big fan of Samsung products, Samsung drives, they have the excellent software comes with them. I highly recommend them. I don't have any qualms with mine. I put the 980 Pro with heat sink in several devices. I put the 970 Pro in a device. Currently the latest and greatest is the 990 Pro. I've also used that. That is my main drive and my main desktop, but this drive is going in the secondary slot of a laptop. So the 980 Pro is more than powerful enough to handle that. Really, there's probably Probably no reason for me to put the 990 Pro in my desktop, but I just wanted to try the latest and greatest, but the 980 Pro works great for me. So let's take a look what's inside the box. What's in the box? So standard packaging here, just the slim little guy himself. In the packaging, there is no screw. So I gotta hope my device has a screw. And the 980 Pro, it also does not come with a screw. But here's an idea, you know, so it's the same device, but this one has a big hunk and heat sink on it and this one does not so in a laptop the heat sink is not going to work on a desktop or a playstation 5 the heat sink is going to be perfect but for me again i'll be using this in a laptop so i need to use the one without the heat sink and again i'm just going to be using it in my secondary drive so all you gotta do there's not a lot of prep work needed right so i'm just going to shut down my device completely shut it down you see the lights are still on so it's not fully powered lights went off so now it should be powered off completely i'll use my trusty app fix it toolkit shut this guy down you know and the desktop is different but in a laptop of course you want to have something laid down so you don't scratch it. you don't have to right you can just destroy your equipment if you want but if you want to take care of your stuff it's nice to lay down something i just use a mouse pad i'm going to use a razor mouse pad with this alienware laptop but that's all right that fix it kit's nice as you can just hold your stuff here and it should just be just straight up uh not t5 this is just straight up phillips All right, let's get our little prank guy out. All right, so luckily there is a screw here, so that's good. I did not remember before. You should know that beforehand. It's hard to know. Luckily on this one, the Alienware M18, there is a screw here. All right, so what you should do, of course, is unplug your battery. You should also be wearing a wrist strap, but I'm also not gonna do that. So I got my little screw out. Dell cheaps out on the M18, at least mine with the 4080. It has no extra heat sink. I did contact Dell to see if they would had an extra one and they were out of stock at the moment. So, so it just slots in, it only goes one way. You can see it sits down right there perfectly. Let's go ahead and just screw them back on. Screw it. All right, so it's a good thing that Dell had it here because the Samsung didn't come with it. So, but both the device manufacturer should come with the screw and the SSD should as well. They don't always so. This M18 can fit four SSDs, only two of the larger ones, but you can fit two of the smaller ones over here, but they do not have a screw. So you would have to apply your own screw for those. Like I said, this one has these little teeth here, sort of, if you can see that. So you gotta fit that in properly. So while I do like Dell products and Alienware products, I've only taken part a handful of laptops and by far, no question, no contest. The Dell XPS 9710 was the worst thing to ever take apart. And this one's not great, at least not compared to Razer. Like Razer is such a simple thing to take apart. So I don't know if Dell doesn't want you taking stuff apart or what, but the 9710 was by far the worst experience I've ever had taking anything apart. probably sufficiently stripped all the screws in here, but I'm never taking this thing apart again. So unless to retrieve that drive, I guess, maybe, maybe not. Really a pretty painless prop. I mean, assuming it works. <laughs> I don't want to get too overconfident and it does not work, but assuming it works, fairly easy process. I don't want to lose you by getting too technical, but a good way to tell if you did something wrong, if you turn it on and then it explodes. All right, so mine does not appear to be exploding. So that's good. That's nice. All right, so right off the bat, it's not gonna recognize stuff. So if you, it's not gonna show a draft. So if you go to your file explorer and look at this PC, it only sees one disk. So what you gotta do is initialize this disk. So you wanna go to disk management and it will prompt you right up. You need to initialize the disk. So you wanna do GPT, not a master boot record. Hit okay, you can see it's unallocated right here. So now all we gotta do is create a new simple volume and you wanna make sure it's maxed out, which it is. And we're gonna sign in a drive letter and you could use D. You 
you know, pretty common in computers that use a C drive and a D drive. The D drive stands for do not subscribe to MASH IT. I'm gonna use G for... No, G is for... No, G, I use this G for the games drive. And so we're gonna call it here games and hit next finish and now we should have a games drive there we go so if we go this pc we can see we have two drives now a c drive and a g drive and let's go ahead and do a little test crystal disk mark so again the c drive is the one that came pre-installed on the alienware and so let's test that test will take a little bit of time a few moments later all right, so you can tell here we have 7,136 read speeds, 6,296 write speeds, which is pretty good. That's on the C drive. That's the one that came with the device. I believe it's SK Hynix. Let me double check. Yeah, disk zero is SK Hynix. And then disk one, of course, is a two terabyte SSD 980 Pro. And let's just go ahead and switch on down to the G drive. And we'll run all those tests again. It should wrap it right up. Five hours later. All right, so now the G drive is done. This is our Samsung 980 Pro. So this is 7,000 read speeds, 5,166 write speeds. So again, still excellent scores, not as fast as the C drive. Again, I'm gonna use this for games. Big brainer, pro gamer. So the read drive is really more important. But either way, those are both blazing fast speeds. No qualms whatsoever on my end. Very happy with these scores. It's gonna be a good drive. So you get the big thumbs up. I like it. That's it, thanks for checking me out.